Hello, my name is Sue Aspen and I'm one of the practitioners at Relationships Australia in Western Australia. I'm pleased to offer a series of short videos to help support you and um, help you through the COVID-19 uh, crisis pandemic that we're all experiencing. And hopefully some of these uh, videos will also help you uh, beyond uh, this time as well. I'm going to be sharing some tools to help you better manage your mental health and to stay well and to also um, cope at this time and perhaps other challenging times that uh, might come about in your life. Life doesn't always go as smoothly as we'd like it to and it's good to know that uh, we can do some things to help ourselves along uh, when we experience um, these ups and downs. So whether you're at work or at home or uh, working from home, really no matter uh, what your situation, I'm really hoping that these videos uh, and talking about some relevant topics uh, will be helpful to you. Um, I've worked for Relationships Australia for around about seven years and I've worked uh, across different areas of the organisation. Um, I have a deep interest in mental health and I'm a psychologist uh, by profession. So we might ask, where to start with, with some of this? Well, I often like to start with the uh, topic of self-care. So what do we mean by self-care? Um, how do we go about it? And uh, maybe, you know, why, why it's important. So let's start off with what is self-care. Self-care is really about intentional activities that you do, that you engage in, um, that help you for the long term and the, and the shorter term as well. So they're, they're kind of on purpose things that we do to help support our mental health, our emotional health and our physical health. So it's about taking care of all of that. On a, a daily basis, we need to engage in self-care um, activities you know, every day and, uh, and different types of activities, which I'll uh, talk about here. So at its heart, self-care is about that on-purpose, intentional caring for ourselves in helpful ways. And in doing that, I think it's also about valuing ourselves. And uh, of course, when we value ourselves, it's easier for us to value other people um, around us. It's good for everybody when we can do these things. So why do we practice self-care? Well, we know that self-care really is great for our mood and it helps to reduce anxiety. It's just one of the key things that we can do um, every day to uh, keep ourselves in a good space. And it's particularly important when it comes to this sort of time of COVID-19 and beyond, um, you know, with other challenges, as I said. So it also helps build resilience and resilience is that sort of magic key, magic um, ingredient, I guess, that um, helps us stay on top of uh, things as they occur in life. We don't uh, crumble so much when we've got a uh, good resilience. It means that we can bounce back from adversity and we can, you know, just better cope with, um, you know, uh, negative changes, I suppose, as they come along in life. It also, as I said, it helps us um, if we practice self-care, it's that sort of practice in valuing ourselves. And it's, it also is a really great example for our kids. You know, we, we definitely, if we have kids, we want them to grow up valuing, valuing themselves and also uh, taking time to um, look after themselves. So when we self-care, we really, um, we exercise those values and it lets our families and people that we love uh, learn from that and see us doing it and they're more likely to engage in that as well. So it provides, um, you know, um, a, a great way to, in general, stay well. In a nutshell, it's about um, valuing ourselves and other people and doing some intentional behaviours that are good for us for the short term and the longer term. So we might also consider or ask the question, um, what's not self-care? And that's maybe a funny thing to consider, but I think it's, we can often understand what self-care is by looking at the things that it is definitely not. So self-care is not a luxury. It's, uh, you know, sometimes I think that we think it's uh, just one of those things that we do for fun or uh, that it's some sort of indulgence or even uh, that we don't deserve it. You know, we might have other things going on in our lives that take our time, you know, things that we're busy with, we prioritise, often kids over ourselves and so on. So we can often feel as though uh, it's just a sort of luxury thing that we uh, can do once we've done everything else. Um, I know that my experience as a practitioner when um, I've been working with people that have been uh, quite unwell is one of the things I notice is that their self-care is often the first thing that they've um, 
that's gone or that they've given up or they've given that up along the way um, because doing self-care actually really supports our mental health but it does feel as though sometimes we don't have uh, the time for it or maybe the motivation for it but it's really important. So self-care is also not um, an avoidant activity. It's not something that we do to distract ourselves. And I think this is one of the distinctions that uh, can get a bit blurred. So we often do activities such as, um, you know, normal things that we can all do, of course. Uh, you're just watching tons of Netflix. And of course, that's, you know, things like that, tons of movies or Netflix or screen time. Um, and that's really easy to do, of course, when we're all at home uh, with COVID-19. And perhaps just at other times, when we get challenged with things, life gets a bit hard, we want to kind of hide away a little bit. We want to avoid uh, the stresses. So we do things to, you know, we jump on the couch or we uh, sometimes oversleep. You know, that's another good way of uh, avoiding uh, stress, but it's just a distraction. It's not really self-care at all. Um, other things that we do is we, that we might have been a bit more aware of is uh, we eat tons of chocolate or we, um, you know, we drink too much. And also, we can do things that might look helpful, but they're really not, uh, such as over-exercising. You know, we do these things just to get rid of the stress so we can kind of feel better. But that's not what self-care is all about. Self-care isn't about zoning out or, um, you know, re reacting to stresses and quickly doing something that just relieves the stress. Self-care is much more about that um, idea that what we might do is good for the short term but also for the longer term that caring for our for ourselves in that way so yeah it's stress relieving for sure but it's something that is a bit more enduring you know that self-care that replenishes us recharges our batteries and nourishes us in some way so there are five things to think about uh, to do with your self-care so number one is what works for you you know what do you do what have you done in the past that you think are activities that really replenish you and recharge you um, that are good for your mental health your emotional health and your physical health often we've done things in the past and we just stop doing them life changes we get busy and uh, we forget that we enjoy particular activities so maybe um, you know think about those uh, activities that you could get back to and things that you used to be interested in. You might be able to uh, re some of that stuff. Uh, number two is start to maybe write a list of activities to reduce. You know, some of those distractions, those avoidant behaviours that I've just spoken about, they're really good to highlight, to kind of go, I need to do less of that and start to reduce them over time. Some of them you'll be able to just um, take out of your life and others uh, you might have to wean yourself off because we've all got these little habits that, um, you know, can be a little bit hard to break. But as long as we're aware of them and we work at them and we know why we're working um, on them is, is useful. Uh, number three is to prioritise your self-care. It does take time and there's no getting away from that. Uh, we have to, you know, put time aside. We have to sh maybe schedule it into our day. And um, yeah, so there's no, there's, there's no other way that we can do it. We need to go out and exercise um, to, to, you know, to meditate or um, some of the other things that I will talk about here in a moment. So putting it further up the list as a priority is, is really important. If you're not a person um, that um, you know, walks this path easily, you know, it might be a bit of a struggle for you to, uh, to, to actually self-care. You know, you sort of got to um, unhook yourself from, say, the guilt of taking time for yourself. So further up the list it needs to go. We need to take care of ourselves first before we take care of other people or in order for us to take care of other people for the long term. Uh, number four is we can take note of what works. So after you've gone through and you've done some self-care for a week and, you know, look back at what you've done, how, it, how it's uh, feeling, you know, what's nourishing you, what you feel replenished by as you're doing it. And just ask yourself too, is this good for me for the long term? And that helps you work out whether it's one of those sort of avoidant distracting behaviours or uh, whether it's more sort of that intentional self-care. Um, and number five is interlacing, I guess, um, some of the pillars of self-care. And I just call these things pillars. So there are some things that we need to do um, every day, every week, um, 
and incorporate this into our self-care uh, program. So we might, when I uh, was thinking about this, I thought, oh, that's actually a nice little uh, acronym of NEST, N-E-S-S-T. So the first one stands for nutrition. And we know that, of course, uh, good uh, nourishment, you know, physical food, physical nourishment in the form of good food is, um, is, is really important for our mental well-being and, of course, our physical health as well. I think it's been um, a bit challenging for a lot of us, especially through COVID-19, uh, because there's not been a lot to do and uh, we've all been maybe cooking and eating a little bit too much. So it's maybe time to think about uh, going back to some really good nourishing food in order to support ourselves uh, that way. Uh, number two, or E, is um, exercise. Um, exercise is absolutely so important for uh, reduction of anxiety, for keeping our mood stable, and of course, keeping ourselves physically healthy as well. There's lots of ways to exercise, even if we're inside, and I think that there's been lots of creativity, especially around COVID-19 with uh, exercise, doing yoga in front of t television or uh, doing some sort of online exercise um, activity. So exercise gets the blood going, uh, the oxygen going around the blood, gets our muscles working and makes us feel good. Um, S stands for sleep and it's important that we have enough sleep and we get good sleep. We don't operate well when our sleep isn't great so we need to work on sleep and making sure that we're not oversleeping. If we don't have a lot going on where we're, you know, we're at home or we're out of work or whatever, it's so easy just to you know, spend more time uh, snoozing. So that can be relaxing to a point but after that we really need to um, you know, be mindful of not oversleeping. Another S, double S, is our social contact. And of course, that's one of been, been one of the challenges that we've all faced through COVID-19. Some of us have had to live alone and that's very stressful if we're not used to doing that or don't like doing that. Um, others of us have had less contact with uh, family members and certainly friends. So social contact is important to us. It's part of our self-care, uh, one of our self-care pillars. So you know, to, to be creative around that, to make sure that you can get out and maybe exercise with a friend or uh, use those uh, video platforms. I know a lot of people have uh, started to discover Zoom and, and uh, other technology that helps us keep connected with people. So, you know, we can even uh, set up a, um, a laptop or a, an iPad if we have one or even a phone and um, have a meal together with family that's uh, maybe you know, in another suburb or in another state or even another country. It's a kind of fun way to connect and keeping those, that social connection going. It's part of our self-care um, regime. And T, the last T stands for nest. The last T is about time to relax. And relaxation might be that you do some meditation, um, that you might talk somebody into giving you a massage, a foot massage in your house. Um, you know, just spending time uh, doing some macrame or some craft, if you like that kind of thing, a jigsaw puzzle. That's just all time to relax. And it can include, you know, watching a movie or having a bit of Netflix, but it's keeping it balanced and it's keeping it purposeful as a means to self-care, not just to, to avoid. So that brings us to the end of this little video and I hope these tips have been helpful and we have uh, another series uh, of videos um, that you can carry on with as well if you'd like to know um, some things around other topics. Thanks for watching.